When it comes to building a bike, many of us will quite simply leave it to the professionals. Be that because we think we don't know what we're doing or because we might not have all of the tools we need. But what if I told you, you might have all of the tools you could possibly need in your back pocket. I know, incredible. So today I'm gonna see if I can build a bike using nothing more than a multi-tool. This is gonna be a bit of a test of self-control because as you can see, we're at GCN Megabase in a workshop equipped with every single tool you could possibly think and need to use, including some of those which you'll hopefully never use, such as this, a tube straightening tool. But oh, don't worry, we'll never use it, you'll be all right. Um, but today I'm gonna to be using this, my little Topeak mini ratchet rocket set. So um, as you can see here, we've got a little ratchet, selection of little Allen keys, Torx keys, screwdrivers. We've got this piece here, which is actually a miniature torque wrench. So I can do all the bolts up on my bike correctly. And then should you need it, we've got a little chain tool here as well, all encased in this handy little pouch. Nice. Now then, I did ask my glamorous assistant to carefully dismantle a bike for me, lay each part out in the correct order, ready to be built up, no stress at all. But um, yeah, here we are with a bike with disc brakes, internally rooted cables, DI2, a press fit bottom bracket. Yeah, not really the easiest thing to take apart. So it looks like, as an added bonus, I'm gonna be having to take this bike as far apart as possible and using nothing more than my multi-tool. And I suppose we might as well keep a little counter going in the corner of the screen to see how many times I have to resort to using some of the tools from our workshop. And obviously, if I get the bike apart with my multi-tool, then I'm gonna be able to put it back together afterwards. So let's see how I can get on. Right, first job we're gonna to need to do is take the wheels out of our bike, then we can move onto the drivetrain. So let's open our multi-tool up, take our tool out, and we're gonna have a six mil, I think we've got here. So six mil and a key. Oh. Next up, we can take our chain off so that we can remove some of the other components. We've got a rear derailleur, front derailleur, a chain set, then we can get those out of the way. But I've got a quick link in my chain, which I thought was a good idea. Obviously, I said we've got a chain tool in our mini ratchet set, um, which is great for driving the pins out of your chain. However, it hasn't got a tool to divide a quick link off. So early on in this process, I'm already going to have to resort to using the tool wall. So I guess that'll be the first marker on our um, counter. With our chain off and out of the way, we've got access to remove the rest of these components now, starting with our rear derailleur. Nice and easy here. So we've got five mil. Take that straight out of our little mini set. And then that will come off nice and easy. Also, um, I can remove the cable from here, so I can just unplug that carefully with my fingers. Yeah. Many people will say you need to use the tool to do this, which if I had it to hand, would be ideal. However, I'm gonna use my fingers, um, and providing you're careful with it, it'll be fine. Before I take my front derailleur off, a couple of easy parts to remove first. So I can take my spares little tool container off out of the way, tuck that to one side, and then also we can remove the bottle cages two little simple components to remove, and it will also make it easier to gain access to the bolt to remove the front derailleur. And these are five mil by the looks of it. Also, a handy little feature of this uh, mini ratchet set is this is our uh, chain tool, and I can actually remove this, and it gives us a nice little extender to put onto our ratchet, so I can go like this, that little component, slide into there like that, and then my five mil Allen key piece in there, Nice and easy. Great access to undo my bottle cages. Same case again for the front derailleur. When it comes to removing the cable, providing we don't pull on the actual cable part of itself, we actually use the connector, that's where the strength is and that's where the tool would normally connect to. So apply a bit of caution and you'll be no, no stress at all. Before I remove the chain set off of the bike, I can now look to remove the pedals. Fortunately enough for me, these pedals have got an eight mil Allen key fixing on the rear of them. However, some pedals might not have that and might just have a spanner fit in. So if that's the case, you might struggle to remove them with your multi-tool, but fortunately enough for me, this actually has an eight mil Allen key fitting in it. So, oh, happy days, nice little bonus. So I can just remove these uh, like so. Oh, 
bit tight, but fortunately enough, I know that I don't do my pedals up too tight. Um, but if your pedals are particularly tight, you could end up damaging sort of the insides of your multi-tool, or you might just struggle, because obviously you've not got a vast amount of leverage there. But another handy little tip with this multi-tool is, we can take this little extension that we used a minute ago to get extra, extra leverage on the bolts here. We can actually put it in the end of there. Look at that, we've got an even longer little multi-tool to undo tight bolts, perfect. When it comes to removing the cranks from your bike, if you've got Shimano cranks, just like I have on my bike, then they're held on with two pinch bolts, a couple here, and then they've got this little end cap bolt here, which ordinarily, I would take the nice, perfectly made tool from the wall over there and undo it with ease and simplicity. However, our multi-tool doesn't have that tool built into it. So what we're gonna do is improvise um, and use what we've got to work with. Because as my good friend Bear Grylls once said, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's exactly the same approach we need to take when using our multi-tool, especially at the roadside. So before we can undo this end cap, we need to undo the pinch bolts. These are a five mil Allen key. So we can quite simply undo these, undo each one evenly, undo those, make them nice and loose. And then inside the pinch bolt, there is this small little plastic pin, which we need to lift up. And to do that, we can just use one of the small Allen key pieces in here. And that fits in this gap, lovely. You just poke that and pop that up like that. With those bits out of the way, we can move on to undoing this end cap here. Now, it shouldn't be done up very tight because it doesn't need to be. And as I said, we don't have the specific tool for that in our multi-tool set. So we're gonna need to improvise and use what we can out of the selection of tools that we've got. Now, I know because I've been in this situation a number of times before that you can just put two different Allen keys together to fit into that gap and act in the same way as the tool would. So I've got our eight mil piece here, which I can put in like so, and then guide that in with the five mil as well. And you'll see, but that is then a nice snug fit. And because this isn't particularly tight, can then just guide that and undo the cranks off. I mean, look at that. There you go, you can see if I turn that, that we've just got those two bits in there. And this only works because it's a part which isn't particularly tight. You obviously can't do this on components that are particularly tight or tricky to undo. So the most important thing is, only use a technique like this when you know you're not gonna damage the tools or damage the bolt. When it comes to removing the stem and the handlebars at the front of our bikes, this is a bike with internal cable routing. So it is a little bit more of an involved process, but that's a small price to pay to have sleek looking front end and a nice smooth finish to our bikes. However, something that you do need to take note of is some stems and sort of front of these bolt fitments here will be a Torx fitting, not just an Allen key. So take note of what your bike has got and then make sure that your multi-tool set has the right pieces for it. This one here, fortunately, has Allen keys fittings and then also has the Torx bits here as well. So we're covered in both cases. However, if this was an entry level to mid range bike, then of course it would be a slightly easier process to just remove all of the components in one go. But we're gonna to stick to true to our word and we're gonna remove everything as best as we can using our multi-tool. Well, and if I have to resort to the tool board on the back, well, it'll be another score on the counter. So see how we go. So even taking bits out like the bar end plugs, normally a super simple job, you just go get a flat headed screwdriver and pop them out. But I'm having to make do and use my hands and it's just little bits like this, which are a bit of a pain, which normally would be easy. But in the interest of sticking to my rules, yeah, there we go, we got it.
Now, if I wanted to make my life incredibly and very unnecessarily difficult, I could continue on to remove the DI2 cables all the way from the inside of the bars, but yeah, there's not much chance of using my multi-tool to route these cables back through the bends and out through these holes. So um, I can just leave them be for now, but is another component removed from our bars. Next stage of the process up front here would be to open this hydraulic system to allow us to guide the hoses through. But in doing so, we would need to cut them to remove the fittings off the end because they won't fit through the intricate gaps and bits and pieces in the frame. And that does seem somewhat of a wasteful process on a video which is geared around having fun and seeing how far we can dismantle things with only our multi-tool. So I won't do that because it's very wasteful. And then the next step that we're gonna have to do is to remove our seat posts disconnect our DI2 um, cable and battery from that out there. And then I think that means we've reached the limit of what we can achieve only by using our multi-tool. To go any further, we'd have to resort to using our tools on the wall at the back. And so far, I've only got one score on the counter. So I'm gonna count that as pretty good. Right, our final component to remove is our seat post, which houses the DI2 battery. And it's the final thing to remove using our multi-tool. We've got a lot done with this little thing. Uh, so let's get this in there. Guide that undone. Do that, place that to the side. It certainly does it. Right, so in the same way as we've removed the rest of the other DI2 cables, we just need to get hold of this nice and carefully at the connector, give it a firm pull, and out it is. And keep it tucked to the side, because you certainly don't want this cable falling inside the frame, because you have trouble getting that out with your multi-tool. So that's it, that is as far apart as I can get my bike, using nothing more than my multi-tool. Although, I did have one, one counter where, uh, where I cheated and used a tool on the back. But that's pretty good going. Yeah, I'll allow myself that. Um, all that remains now is to get this thing back together and hopefully in no time at all, it'll be working and ready to go because I actually need to use this bike tomorrow. So hopefully, uh, well, I don't have any problems running along the way. So there you have it, my bike is back together. Can you believe it? Um, yeah, I can actually, because this isn't the first time I've built a frame up using a multi-tool. I did it a few years ago on a training camp when I snapped the frame. So I had a new one sent out to me and did build it up. That was before disc brakes and all these fancy integrated cables though. But that is a point that you do need to know. Sure, it is possible to build a bike up using a multi-tool, but you are gonna get to a couple of little tricky or sort of sticking points if you've got a bike that's got all the sort of super slick and cool integrated cable in. But, you know, that's all right because it looks super cool and super aero when it's on the bike. And one more important point, because I've said it once already in this video, but if you take one thing away from this, it's to choose your multi-tool carefully and make sure that it's got all the fitments and pieces relative to your bike to make sure that when you're out, you don't get stuck having something that doesn't fit. Hope you enjoyed seeing me build up this bike with nothing more than a multi-tool. And if you did enjoy this video, well give it a big thumbs up. And why not let me know in the comments section down below if you can think of any fun challenges that I can set Ollie next. I'll keep an eye out for some of those. Anyway, see you later.